Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, me and my brother are going to recover the seat that come out of the square body pickup truck. It's going to look awesome when it's done. I've also got a really neat piece of equipment new to the shop that I want to share with you, along with several other things. So, thanks for watching. Anytime I get a Phillips screwdriver screw that, uh, you know, it's kind of tough to get out with a regular screwdriver, I like to use this thing here. Just, it's a ratchet, basically. That, uh, you know, has screwdriver bits, gives you a lot more leverage. Definitely handy. What the heck is that? What kind of stuff falling out here? Hmm. The door lock pulled. I wonder how long that's been stuck in that plastic cover. Probably as long as I've been alive. No, it couldn't be because I am older than this truck, unfortunately. So this seat never worked and you know, went back and forth well. It's got a cracked track on the driver's side and it's bent right here. So I'll try to see if I can't straighten that up or fix it. So I guess I'm ready to start pulling out all these hog rings. If you've never had one of these seats apart before, uh, that's what those are called, hog rings. That's what I've always heard them called. That's what my brother calls them, and he does upholstery, you know, like a hog ring in the nose. It's kind of the same idea. It just clamps the edge of the material around a hole in the metal frame and holds it in place. Very, very simple way of attaching a cover, seat cover to a frame. So I've got a new piece of equipment in the shop. I was gonna share this with you a, a week or about a week ago, but I decided to wait until I had a job that involved it, and I do right now. So let me share this new piece of equipment with you. I am stoked to have this thing. I think most of you will like it. Let me share with you what I've got. So my new tool is an amazing Dake hydraulic press. Now, I, to me, when I think of a quality press, I think of a Dake press. I'm not affiliated with Dake whatsoever, but ever since I've been working metal, I have wanted a Dake press. Either a Dake Arbor Press or a Dake Hydraulic Press, right? To me, that was the press to have because, you know, it's an old American company that's been around since the early 1800s or mid-1800s, maybe 1880, late 1800s, whatever. 1800s, it's a long time they've been around, still around, actually. And, uh, you know, this thing to me, just screams old, right, American iron. In fact, the, this thing is completely constructed of nothing but steel that is labeled Bethlehem. So this thing is not only a Dake Arbor Press, but it is constructed of Bethlehem steel. And that's another you know, awesome story in itself. Uh, Bethlehem steel was like mid-1800s, I think, founded. And uh, I think they were in Lehigh Valley, in Pennsylvania. Uh, they I forget what their uh, 
what their employee count was in their in their biggest time, but it was tens of thousands, I think. Um, huge steel producing company that produced steel in all of the major U.S. landmarks. Uh, Empire State Building, San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge, uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, George Washington Bridge, uh, you name it. If it's an old American landmark that used steel, chances are that steel is Bethlehem steel. All of our ships and stuff like that that we produced, I mean, it is a 100% American company or was, and uh, this thing is made of that steel that came from that company. That unfortunately no longer exists, but uh, but you get the idea. You know, it's just a piece of American history, really, and I'm proud to own it. Now, when I got this thing, I really saved it. It was destined for the scrapyard. Uh, it didn't work, you know, like a lot of the stuff that I get. But the only thing that was wrong with this, it, I mean, what can go wrong or with a press, right? It was out of fluid, basically, and had air trapped in it and hardly worked, and the people were frustrated with it, and they were gonna throw it away, and uh, ended up uh, you know, working out something on it, and I am glad that I did. You know, also, the cable lifting system for the table. You know, this is not some new f invention that you see on some of these newer presses. This has been around for a very long time. But anyway, cable's broken, handle's broken, right? No big deal. All I did, fill it full of fluid, bleed it, bleed the air out of the system following the instructions that are conveniently stamped on this tag that is riveted to the edge of the press there, and that was it. You know, works perfectly fine. Now this is a 25 ton press. I do have another press, which is 50 tons, twice the size of the cylinder, but to be honest, I don't use that press to its, the 50 ton press to it even near its full capacity, and this is gonna be all the press that I'm gonna need, I'm sure, in my shop. So what I'm gonna do is send that other press over to my brother's shop and let him use it. So I love the tags or the labels on this old press. So here it's in a metal tag riveted to the frame. It is the operating instructions and service instructions, which I followed to get this thing back operating. It says fill reservoir with a good clean oil such as mobile DTE light. Filter through a cheesecloth if preferred, but avoid lint. It also tells you how to bleed the air out of the system. I followed that. It tells you how the operating procedure, how to operate the press kind of. Also uh, tells you how to service the check valves in the head of this thing if it fails to maintain pressure once you pump it up, which I did because uh, you know I just wanted to go through the process to clean it all up. So really nice. You wouldn't see this on today's piece of equipment. Nowhere on here does it tell you that it's going to give you cancer in California. You know today's equipment would have a. Uh, it also says to use white lead on the pipe joints. You know it's been around a while. It also, uh, you know, it's really, really durable, which today's would be a sticky piece of paper stuck on crooked that only tells you that it will give you cancer if it's in California. It's also got a really nice tag up here and a brass tag that uh, gives you the model number, some sort of water type sticker that is kind of so dirty I can't read it and I'm afraid to clean it because I'll wipe it off. I did slightly wipe a little bit on it, but you know, I was afraid I was gonna damage it, so I just left it alone. Uh, so, you know, there you go, really nice old school tags that, uh, that look awesome. So the business end of this press, the actual cylinder, is pretty neat, actually. It's a cylinder, a uh, fluid reservoir, and the pump mechanism all built onto one single unit, so it's pretty compact. Valve sticks to the top of the cylinder, or the gauge, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's in frame or not. But look how heavy this thing is built. Just the valve body on this. I mean, the rod that comes out is half-inch steel on a plastic-dipped, really nice uh, feel and handle. So half-inch steel on the tie bar for the pump. Five-eighths or three-quarter, I'm not sure exactly, the size of that cylinder. And a long throw that moves this thing down quite a bit. So it's not slow. Plus, it retracts really fast, which is nice. So if you're doing multiple parts or repositioning, this thing is really, really nice. A little ship's wheel there on a threaded ram, so you can just run that down just like that. And obviously you want to use that as tucked up as possible, but you get the idea, especially if you're doing anything that involves you know, high pressure. 
So I love everything about this press and I don't think there's anything on it, even the patina that's on it, that I'm gonna change. I will wipe off the loose dirt and the wet oil, but uh, that's it, right? Fix the things that are broken and, uh, and use it. So on the press here, I have my seat tracks for my truck. Both of them are bent. This hasn't worked since I've owned it. You know, it would, one would, this one on the passenger side would kind of shimmy back and forth, but the driver's side pretty much was stuck. So we need to bend this back straight. I need to weld up this brake that's on it. And uh, this one's tweaked as well. So let's see if we can't position this in a way where we can bend this back to the way that it should be. How in the world that got bent, I will never know. All right, so I am hoping, I don't wanna bend that. So I'm hoping that I can just press right here and it'll straighten out this track a bit. Then I'll clean up that spot there if this works and uh, you know weld it up. So. I can't lift this table yet. It really needs lifted, but this shouldn't take much pressure. So I'm going to really run this thing down farther than it should be and, uh, you know, press on it. I don't have the handle that come with this, but it's just probably a uh, piece of steel similar to this. This is a concrete stake. You tell me when it gets straight. That's right. Go a little past it. All right, let's let it off, see what it does. Uh, that's maybe it. Let's see if it functions now. Oh, it's even bent that way. Wow, this thing is just torqued all over the place. Really, I need a set of seat tracks, but if this works, well, if this works, I'm not gonna buy a set. That's for sure. There, yeah, let's do it. been too much. Oh, a lot nicer though. Okay. moves. This one kind of moved before, so I'm going to call that good enough. So check out the new arrival. It's not my dog, but this dog has been running around here. Uh, somebody, somebody may have dropped her. Uh, she's been running around here for the last two or three weeks, really skittish and scared. Yeah, we would see her on our uh, on our cameras, and uh, every time we'd come outside, she'd just you know blast into the woods and she would hide. So I'm not for sure what happened. Maybe somebody dropped her. People are you know people are bad like that. Uh, but uh, she's a great little dog. It took her forever. She just started coming up to us yesterday. We were every day we would see her in the woods. She'd be watching us from the sides of the woods. And we'd talk to her, we'd put her food out on the porch, and, you know, trying to get her to where she would, uh, you know, come to the house so she doesn't get on the road is what we was worried about. So uh, finally, she just said, okay, you know, I'll belly crawl up to you, please don't hurt me. And we started petting her and now she's like a, I don't know, she's like a different dog. She is uh, just as loving, she's smart, 
you know, she's probably as big as she's ever going to get. She's still young, uh, so we're trying to find her a home. I think we may have her somebody who's going to take her, but uh, she'd make somebody a great dog. Uh, I'm not sure what type of dog she is, but you know, she's a cutie. So this bottom seat frame is shockingly good. Usually the broken two on the driver's side from the person dragging their carcass in and out on that end constantly. They're rotted out from back sweat a lot of times. Uh, this one's not. It is cracked on the driver's side in two places and one place as far as I've seen on the passenger side, but it's not broken in two like they normally are. Really weak because of those missing and a missing spring and a stretch spring. So we'll replace that and that'll stiffen this the support up here. None of the wires are broken. Surprisingly nice, actually. So we're going to weld up those cracks, replace those springs, wire brush this thing off really good, and shoot it with some epoxy. And it'll last another 38 years, hopefully. And it'll give me some extra support so I don't feel like I'm three feet tall when I'm riding around in this thing. So there's a close-up shot of the brake on the passenger side, the worst one anyway, runs about halfway up. And we got a crack over here as well. And the crack on the other side looks about like that. Just, just start. So we'll run our cutoff wheel down that crack and open it up a bit, fill that void with our MIG welder, and that's it, right? Grind it a little bit smooth, brush it off, spray it with some epoxy. This thing should be good to go. What is it? What is it, girl? That's a good idea. A trash bag over the corners so the seat slides easy over the foam. Remember that. Huh, never seen that before, but that is a good idea. What do you think as far as carpet? <laughs> oh, I knew you was gonna say that. That looks well, pretty good. Yeah, it's a little darker. It's a medium dark oak. I don't want too light a carpet, because beige. Any, any of those look good, really. You know, that kind of a contrast. Or...
This is pretty. Yeah, medium dark kinda oak. Like, I kind of like that. That's oh. desert. Oh, that's desert tan. That's close to the color, but I don't want it necessarily that close. I don't think. Yeah, I'd go a little darker if I was you. Oh, you gonna get uh, some new carpet or something? Mm-hmm. This would be a good. Either one of these no, would be a the nice carpet. contrast. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> What I'm doing is cutting it to where this will not touch the sides the cover. of the cover. So, so it won't rub into it? Well, it won't leave a little impression. Okay. It don't have to be pretty. Yeah, just, just needs to work. That's just going to help support this foam and keep it from sagging down into that frame so much. Right. Hey. Yeah. He's like, hey, what is going on here? What's, just, uh, what's another yeah. dog doing? Quit petting me. Or quit, yeah, quit, quit petting that dog. With, with my people here. Let me tune it a little. Tune it up? Fine tune it. She, she is happy here. Look at her. She's right at home. She feels right at home. She has. She really made up. Where do you want to set your seat frame and put it together at? On that table. You think? Is that good enough? I guess it's going to be. Right with you. Right with you. I need another dog. You need a shop dog. You don't have any in the shop. I know. I need another dog. <laughs> Look at her. She's so sweet. You want that? I think she'd make a good dog. Oh, she would, I think. She's pretty well behaved. She is a well behaved one. She's laughing. She's laughing. She's struggling. Does she do that a lot? I do it a lot. She laughs at me when I'm working. <laughs> that come with the thing. I broke mine just in case. You put them in these girl's nose, it likes these rings in her nose. And they won't root your yard up. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had that problem, Rick. <laughs>
quarters are where they belong. This corner is steel. We need to set this down on that plastic over there so I can beat on it a little bit because that's what I do. <laughs> this is a well made cover here. I thought it looked pretty nice, but yeah, I don't work with them enough to have anything to compare it to. Use good pull straps and all that. This looks good. Mm -hmm. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. That should stiffen this up just some as well. Yeah. This part's about over. Mm. Done this for a long time. Yeah. How how long? Oh gosh, I was doing it in the late 80s. <laughs> Just be on it. Grab it. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have a dollar for every one of those you put in? Yes, sir. I oh, would. That'd make me happy. Mm -hmm. I'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, okay, I'm done now. Yeah. Going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the house. <laughs> I like that carpet under that. I think that's going to probably add quite a bit of support. That helped it. That helped it. Plus it looks cool. Yeah, when somebody yeah. looks under the seat. If you ever look under the seat, you'll <laughs> see that. Wow. That's, I nice, think that's a nice carpet seat. under the seat. That you got there. <laughs> that's nice even under the seat. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut that one off a little bit. I have two. But it depends on the wire. Some people put wire. I think she stole your screwdriver, Steve. Hey! <laughs> I thought she was praying up there. Okay, that's <laughs> old in there, right? She's hitting them. She's just, I'm hitting them. I want to be shocked. I'll move in one. Hold the other. Hello, girl. Look at it. She said, I was just. Now let's try it. You said, Steve's loud. Oh, man. Go ahead and let's put Hey, she's definitely a shop dog. She needs your tools. Well, eat your tools. <laughs> That's going to look good. She needs a chew toy. She had one. <laughs> you took it away from her. Not me. my tools. All right, so this is a big deal, in my opinion, putting the dash in this thing. I hope that it looks good. I think that it will. I like the way that these colors go together. So let's get a look at it. If we can get it in here without beating it all up. These dashes are actually pretty easy to put in. They just have some clips, like five clips in the back that slide in and lock. went in too easy. Wow. Yeah. That's it. And then it gets one, two, three, four bolts at the bottom. That's 
it. So in the process of installing this dash, what, realistically four or five times to get it to where I was happy, I, I scratched it. I did. I scratched it right in the middle in a little spot. And then right here I scratched it in a couple spots because it's just so tight getting all this together. That's the bad thing about dyed interior is that it does scratch easy. But the good thing is that it touches up super nice. That I mean, it touches up so nice you can't even tell. It just blends right in. If you just scratch the coating lightly, I mean, you can just tss, 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 scratch gone, right? So super good in that aspect. But, you know, otherwise, if you want this interior, this color, you're out of luck in this uh, in this truck anyway. So they just they offer one that's somewhat close to this, but I think pretty much blue, black, red, uh, gray, uh, tan, right? That's it. If you want a custom color, you're gonna have to dye it. And uh, you know if you do decide to go that route, get you at least an extra can or so of that dye. That way, in the future, if you scratch it, you can uh, you know touch it up. Just run down. He goes tight and tight, just as long as there's not the sink's not flopping around. That's about as good as it gets. That fit perfect. It'll set nice too. Oh yeah, that's a, that's twice as stiff as the other. Rick, Rick didn't get beat enough he as a young child, did it? Wow, you already got that think, pulled on there. Yeah, what we need to do, I think, looking at this cover, is about right along in here. Once you just cut this, and slip one piece in there and see how it looks. Oh, it in. <laughs> okay. So, so to be, your, your cover had loops in it. Yeah, it did. You see, these are sewn in. Okay. You ring through them. So we they don't use the wires anymore. Right. Huh. Just go back and put it in. Oh, they have all that energy. The wires are a little better as far as holding the real edge. But this is okay. I mean, because you can literally just, uh, you just ring it to itself. I think on this seat. Yeah, we don't have to work too hard. Yeah, we just ring it that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, you want to just try one piece in there? We can. There's really no need to glue in this. No, it ain't going in there. It can't fall down. See what that looks like. That's probably more like it, really. I don't know. Let's bring it together and see what, see what it looks like. If it don't look good, we'll do it again. We said it in there. You gotta set it. Everybody's tried it. It's nice. Oh, that's nice. It is, isn't it? No, you can't go in go on, there. <laughs> no. no, you can't sit. He's like, he goes, let me try. Yeah, buddy <laughs> wants to try it. It sits sit good, don't it? No, you can't. It's pretty, ain't it? Yeah, I know. That's that's a big deal. <laughs> what is it? Getting more parts off the floor. <laughs> yeah. Get the seat out of here. Get the lots of it. It's all going back in the truck now, which is nice. Looking good. You put a new steering wheel in there too, didn't you? Yep, new steering wheel, new dash. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. That's old. Get your wipers now. You can get yeah, your wiper I can put my up. wipers on. Yeah. Wiper Got a little vent right here. A little bit right here. Which will fix real easy. I guess it had a. Uh, Dealer. Dealer thing on. Paul Miller, wasn't there? Yeah, I think it was Paul Miller. It's not out at the back, is it? Is it near the out? Yeah, it's not on the back. It all seems to be toward the inside. This is my mommy's truck. I want to get in and ride. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> quacking me up. <laughs> She's quacking me up now. She says, this is coaching my home. So this truck is not done, but man, it's getting close. I still like the carpet, uh, the headliner. I got to get the sun visors in, all of the interior trim. And my brother's going to help me out with all that stuff. Interior is what he does, and he's been doing it about as long as I've been alive. So having a, somebody with you and help you that... Uh, you know, his family for one and is a professional in the field that you're working on is a big bonus because most of, most of the time with things that I'm not super familiar with all I do is kind of just you know fumble my way through make mistakes along the way try to learn from them and you know end up with what I end up with usually it's acceptable but not uh, as good as it could be had it been done by somebody who was really up on the topic so I am super glad to have his help on the interior in this thing. So let me show it to you. You'll see where we're at, right? Not finished, but it'll give you a really good idea of what this thing's gonna look like when it's done. And I think personally, that's gonna look absolutely awesome. I just love the color combo between the interior and exterior. I think it looks good. So let me show you where we're at. So check out that interior. Now, far from complete, but this will give you a really good idea of what it's going to look like when it's done. Just, you know, imagine it with carpet, headliner, all the trim panels, all the little bits and bobs, right? It's going to look really good. I've got an aftermarket steering wheel on here, which is really nice because the uh, uh, viewer sent me this. The original one was so sticky, which is just how they get. So I stuck that on there, got the dash in. This seat cover fit about as good as I can imagine one could. It's not too tight, not too loose. And my brother, who does interior work every day said that the quality of this cover was really nice. Now I'm not affiliated with the company that made this, but for those that are interested, it's from uh, ACC, American Carpet, uh, American Custom Carpets, that's where it's from. So really pleased with that, both the bottom and uh, the backrest, both of those fit as, as good as I guess you could ask. So have to say, I don't like tooting my own horn, but I'd I think I nailed it, personally, on the color combo. I'm pretty lucky. I feel lucky every day that I put an outfit on that doesn't clash because of my lack of cor lack of ability to speak English and color coordination. So this exterior and interior, I think it's going to look really, really sharp together. So, there we go. Not finished, but dang close. All right, guys, that's it this week. This thing is so close to being done. It's, I mean, it's not even funny. A few little interior pieces, and that's it. Technically, we can take this thing out on the road now and drive it. You know, it should, should be good to go. And I cannot wait to share the experience of driving this thing, you know, with you guys. We've worked on it for now, you know, almost a year, basically. And it has really come together, and is, it's nice. I'm, I'm proud of it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, I really appreciate it. And that's it. So, thanks for watching. Well, see you next time.